legend in its wine, for its majestic world's great waterways, Western Europe's main arteries of Spain, the Rhine rising in Switzerland, emptying into the North Sea. Here rolls the enchantment, the river of music, of romance and history, following its ancient course through the rich and fertile Rhineland. Here are the haunted castles of the robber barons, relics of exciting yesterdays. Here the puffing, crawling coal barges of today. The Rhine is much more than a river. It is the very heartbeat of Western Germany, pipeline of her people and her industry. Cologne. Who does not know of this beautiful city on the Rhine? Badly devastated during World War II, Cologne survived to rise again. Strangely, almost miraculously, the beautiful Gothic cathedral, one of Europe's architectural masterpieces, was spared destruction. Not far from Cologne, in the teeming valley of the Ruhr, stands another historic city, Wuppertal. Noted for its ingenious Schwebebahn, or monorail. This unique civic railway was built in 1900 and from its inception proved highly practical and successful. Much of this unusual railway of the sky runs above the Wupper River. The Schwebebahn, still an innovation in modern municipal railway transportation, reduces to a minimum the hazards and confusion of today's crowded street traffic. It has also made a double safety record. Consequently, several American cities are contemplating their own versions of the Wuppertal Schwebebahn. From training over a river to boating over a lake in the famous Black Forest. Here on the sparkling Titese, traditional costume goes with traditional custom. In the Bavarian village of Berchtesgaden, typical of many a picturesque mountain hamlet, and once famed as the alpine retreat of a certain dictator, farm families from neighboring villages help celebrate an ancient German costume festival. Dressed in all their traditional peasant finery, they come to join the fun and frolic in this neighborly get-together of the mountain country, where the spectators are just as colorful as the spectacle. The Almabtrieb, when farmers festoon their cattle with floral headdresses. By custom, the herds are driven each summer to higher mountain pastures, and upon their safe return, are decorated as a symbol of thanksgiving. This future herder doesn't think much of the idea, or maybe he's just allergic to motherly bovines. No Bavarian mountain festival would be complete without its folk dancing. And here the children of Berchtesgaden perform the lively Schuppplattler. Just as long ago it was performed by other children of these storied mountains. The happy and spirited youngsters of the new Germany, dancing in the sun, dancing to the tunes and tempos of the past. Hamburg, great citadel of northern Germany and vital port on the Elbe River, is said to have been founded by Charlemagne in the 9th century. Germany's second largest city, Hamburg is known as the Gate to Middle Europe. The busy harbor is a scene of constant interest, especially from an excursion boat. The city itself is as modern as tomorrow. Yet history walks its crowded streets. For Hamburg was among the first of the old German town in the Hanseatic League, a 13th century confederation for mutual protection in matters of commerce and trade, and for mutual resistance against the roving pirate and robber bands of both sea and land. Today, Hamburg keeps pace with the new century, even in her architecture. Always a main attraction is world-renowned Hagenbeck Zoo, 
named after a family that made many an expedition to nature's most primitive kingdoms to procure the wild creatures of plain and jungle. The Hagenbecks were the first to allow their animals to wander freely in a cageless park. A park remarkable for its reproduction of beasts' native habitats. Now other zoos, both in Europe and America, are following the Hagenbeck pattern. Elephants are noted for their prodigious memories and playful natures. And in Hamburg, they really get into the swing of things. Far south of Hamburg is the city of Wetzlar, renowned for an entirely different reason, internationally famous German cameras. At this great optical works, boys must serve a four-year apprenticeship in lens grinding. The competition is keen, the waiting list long, for only the most promising craftsmen are selected for this high precision work. The assembly of the camera itself also requires deft hands. Little wonder that the high standard of German optical products has been maintained. Every employee here is especially trained to uphold that standard. From cameras to cuckoo clocks, another unique German industry found in a limited area of the Black Forest. This intricate and artistic craft has been handed down through the generations. These birds are always on time, except when they work like this obliging bird. Munich, largest city of Bavaria, busy metropolis, traffic and trade. But if Munich is a thriving industrial center, it's peepirited and progressive, it is also an art and cultural center with many traditions. The Oktoberfest of Munich is a traditional and famous Bavarian festival. Everybody loves a carousel, where whirling horses rear and dance, and Bavarian youngsters are no exception. It's a city carnival German style, with the accent on tradition. The boating's fine, particularly craft are mechanized for fun and for thrills. A Wild West show in Munich? It's true, for today's Germany likes its riding, roping, and gun shooting as much as anyone. The long familiar beer wagon, symbol of an era that was as picturesque as its nostalgic memories. Memories of Wienerwurst and Frankfurter sizzling on the fire, of the days when German cheer and hospitality were world renowned. Here, it's a bicycle race, popular event of many a German holiday when country roads are calling. Again, it's Baden-Baden and its casino, perhaps the most beautiful of all German spas. Horse racing, the sport of kings, is also a popular sport in Germany. Ifetheim, near Baden-Baden, is one of the best-known tracks in Europe, a sporting rendezvous of the fashionable and the famous. They're heading for that first turn, pounding out the measured furlongs as they for advantage and position. The fans here love it too, as the flashing thoroughbreds give their all in that final thundering drive for home. The winner's in. Another great handicap run and won. From horse racing to cloud climbing, and now the locale is the Zugspitze, Germany's highest mountain. The sport, skiing. In the fifty altitudes of the mighty Bavarian Alps, the skiers get ready for action. Then they're rocketing free, racing down that dizzy, dangerous highway of the soaring peaks. There's many a champion among these flying daredevils of the wintry Alps. Many a thrill as they ride the wings of the mountain wind. The modern way to travel to Germany is with the speed, comfort, and luxury of mighty TWA Sky Giants. Spacious reclining seats or berths provide complete relaxation as your plane becomes a magic carpet over miles of ocean. 
For the children, they too feel real excitement in this world high above the clouds. You'll enjoy TWA's thoughtful service and delicious complimentary meals as you wing your way eastward on the smoothest, finest transatlantic crossing ever. Indeed, this is the modern way to travel. And TWA is the only company providing one airline service from 60 key cities in the United States to Europe, Africa, and Asia. Once distant lands, today but a pleasant short interlude by TWA. Rhein-Main Airport at Frankfurt on Main is West Germany's terminus for the great international skyliners of this modern air age. Spanning the ocean easily and safely, these silver-winged ships bring visitors from the new world to enjoy the perennial wonders of the old. But superhighway of Germany is another boon to modern transportation. First built as an accessory to war, these rolling long-distance speedways have proved of inestimable value in peace. At Helmstedt, border town between West Germany and the Russian-occupied East, the Autobahn is the only highway open from the British zone to west to Berlin, 104 miles away. Helmstedt is a checkpoint for Allied convoys entering the Soviet zone. Here, as throughout Western Germany, the Allied motto is plainly written, Wir wählen die Freiheit, we choose freedom. On the opposite side of the same sign, but a few feet from Russian territory, is West Germany's interpretation of the Iron Curtain, a design with significant crossbars. At Helmstedt, the foot traffic from east to west continues day after day just as the traffic from west to east, all depending on one's business or one's politics. Berlin and its celebrated landmark, the Brandenburg Gate, on the border between the British and Russian sectors. Through this massive portal, history itself is forever passing. Berlin, once a city of song and laughter, city of the romantic Unter den Linden, now a city sobered by war and its aftermath. But Berlin has not lost her spirit. The Reichstag, formerly the haughty symbol of Nazism, stands battered and broken by the fury of fire and steel. A grim reminder of the fate of aggressors. From the Potsdamer Platz, another division point between East and West Berlin, one can look across into the Soviet sector. Once, Berliners were free to come and go as they pleased. Now they must wait official sanction to cross that line of demarcation in either direction. These are West German police, watchfully patrolling their side of the political fence. On the Russian side, the Volkspolizei, or People's Police. Potsdamer Platz is typical of this strangely divided city so radically changed by war and opposing political ideologies. Near the border stands the Russian War Memorial, silent symbol and constant reminder to the conquered. Guarded by a lone Soviet sentinel, it is all too reminiscent of the retribution that fell upon Berlin and its proud people. Yet all of Germany is not as somber as its unhappily divided capital. Far from it. In the Black Forest, like many another part of this paradoxical but colorful land, they are dancing again to the merry music of the harvest festivals. Laughing again to the tunes and tempos so long familiar to the Germany of yesterday. And in that very dancing, in that laughter, there is rising hope for the Germany of today. For in this country of the arts and sciences, of bright and traditional festivals, democratic-minded Germans are building a new nation, a strong and peaceful land which can take its place among other freedom-loving countries in this world of ours.